Hello everyone and welcome to the third chapter of my scenario editor tutorial for Company of Heroes 3. In this chapter, I'm going to go through the tools that I use to help sketch out the layout for my map. So I'll be using things like the height map editor, the spline tool, and the color map. A brand new brush tool that lets you paint things directly on your map so you can sketch out roads, blockers, water, everything, but without having to get into using specific tools themselves. So diving right in, this is the center VP of my map, and like many Come New Heroes maps before, I'm going to make the center dominated by a large central hill. And I'm also keeping in mind the, the height bonus that units get, so I'm trying to give each layer of this hill I'm making a, you know, I'm not trying to make them big enough so the the preceding layer can't fire down into two layers down and then get a get that height bonus that we we still are a little cautious about and we don't want to you know I don't want to be too overzealous with it so I'm just using the set height tool here and I'm going down in two meter increments and as you can see I've got the brush size to around 17 18 and I'm just going to go ahead and basically make almost like a big cake and I'm gonna take up a lot of space here and then eventually when the time comes I'm gonna smooth this all out and make a very gentle slope. So as you can see here, I've got my central hill sorted out. I decided to up the height in the very summit of it because I'm going to kind of dig a bit of an entrenchment in there so the height's actually going to be reduced significantly. And I think when I smooth it out, the height bonus won't come into effect in it and it won't penalize players trying to take the summit of the hill. Next. I'm going to use the spline tool to create some outlines of defensive emplacements that I'm going to be fleshing out later. They'll also serve as guides for when I use the painting tool to put a little bit more detail into these sketches. And I'll walk you guys through that real quick. So as you can see, I've already got my strip component added to my spline. And for the next little while, I try to create some kind of perfect half oval shape and it doesn't really work out and I kind of I mean it works but I just end up you know the, the precise numbers aren't that important so after playing around with the spline for a little bit I end up getting it to a shape where I think it's okay and then eventually I will go onto my strip component and then I add a blueprint to it and I'm going to look for that dotted line splat texture a dotted line texture that comes from co1 or co2 and it's in here somewhere, I just can't remember where. But it's a very good uh, dotted line for when you're planning things. Um, it's not as pronounced as kind of the the ones in the, the gray box folder with the different bright colors. But this is good for territory outlines, paths, etc. So I'm going to use this as the outline for my little kind of entrenchment oval. And again, I'm just going to tinker with this spline until I find the, the shape that I want. So I've got the shape I wanted, and what I decided to do is just duplicate it. So I hold C, I drag on the line here, press E to rotate it 180 degrees, well to activate the rotation, and then rotate it 180 degrees, bring it out here, figure it out, align it, and I'm good to go. I also use the ruler tool to help me figure out the kind of the spacing I want and, and how big I want this to be. Keep in mind that the standard uh, vision range and firing range of a unit is like 35 meters, so I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't making it too small or too large. And then here I'm just angling my, my uh, oval here properly, and then I'm going to go and copy that and then put two more on either VP. So if you can imagine a kind of front line of defense is running approximately 
in a straight line, but we're taking kind of a diagonal chunk of this front line of this defensive position, and that's going to be our battlefield. So the next thing I'm going to tackle is a very large anti-tank trench. So in this space, uh, in front of these defenses, there was an anti-tank trench in various stages of completeness based around the front line. So I'm going to use uh, uh, splines to draw these kind of short segments. And I'm just going to get a rough idea of where I'm placing them. And so later on, when I go to work out more details of the map flow, I'll, I'll have some parts of it filled in. I'll have some parts of the trench, I don't think, not even there. Um, just because construction, uh, it was never fully completed. So there were certain parts of the front line in this area that were supposed to be protected in this way, but just weren't, uh, they didn't have everything 100% completed. So I'm trying to model that. And then also, this is going to be, uh, this setting is going to be after kind of the first, uh, the first night of combat. So we're going to see some parts of the trenches filled in, as well as many other, you know, battle scars and whatnot. As you all can see, I'm using the spline tool again. And this is because I want the possibility of turning these splines directly into deform components or even wall components. It would have been way faster to just sketch this out with the paint tool or even just use a dotted line to kind of find a path. But I wanted to give them a bit of thickness. They have some weight kind of just as I'm looking at them. I also wanted them perfectly straight so they're, so they're very angular and that uh, those, those sharp angles were a feature historically of this, uh, of this trench in, in some places. I'm giving these spline segments here sharp edges. So to adjust that, you go into the colors button here and then you get this time varying color window that shows up. And all you've got to do is set the alpha on the ends to zero, sorry, to 255. And then you will have a very sharp edge at the end of your spline instead of a gradual fading away. And I'll delve more into this tool in, in a little bit. Right now when we're just doing the layout and things, a lot of these smaller artistic things aren't super important. As you can see here, there's some weird visual artifacts going on here with the splines. And it is a bit annoying, but honestly, it's it's nothing to worry about. It isn't actually putting that texture over that space. So I just wanted to uh, let you all know ahead of time in case you're freaked out. Nothing to really worry about. And you can kind of get it to go away by moving your spline around a bit or readjusting the nodes. But it, it isn't really super important. You might want to try picking another texture maybe using less splines overall. But yeah, like I said, not a big deal. And there we have it, a great outline for my trench. It does have the visual artifact, but like I said, not a huge deal. And I do, I do end up adjusting the the path of this thing because I ended up, I realized it doesn't really work out this way. I on the edges, I kind of push it out a little bit. Now I'm moving on to the color map tool, and as you can see, I'm struggling to place this image here in my map. Now I end up flipping it around by using the mirror X. However, there's no way to actually rotate this image I have, and then also the scaling doesn't work properly. So when I do adjust it to an appropriate size, it's very blurry, hard to see, and completely illegible. Because the image was so faint, I knew that I couldn't just simply rotate the image and paste it into the map. So what I decided to do was use GIMP, a free uh, photo editing tool, kind of like Photoshop. I decided to use that to outline all the lines of the image and put them in a solid black color, uh, zoom, make the image a little bit larger, 
and then rotate it, and I had a pretty good result, I think. So the scale ended up being a little too small, so I didn't end up using these as a one-to-one -one guide, so because they weren't rotated perfectly, that wasn't a big issue. But you'll see here in a second, I just quickly stamp each of them where I want them, and I think the end result looks pretty, pretty good. So the next step is putting in the secondary defensive trenches. So there was another line of much smaller fortifications behind these forward uh, redoubts. With the secondary trenches, I didn't have a top-down diagram like I did with these redoubts. So I just looked on Google Maps where you can still find some of these defensive emplacements. And I just kind of made my own shape. I decided to outline the, the shape that I had painted on here with the spline, just so if I wanted to, I could easily transform this into a deformed spline and use that to make the trench. Which again, I didn't end up doing because trenches are a lot more complicated than they first appear. So my next step in planning the layout of the map is just going to use the color map's most basic function, which is just a regular old paintbrush. So I'm using the red paintbrush here to denote areas that are impassable to the player. So I'm having parts of the trench stay totally intact and that'll kind of force players to move around, but the vast majority of it will be kind of filled in or inconstructed or just not dug enough to the point where it blocks movement. And then I'll also use some green in here to draw roads and I'll use a teal color to paint through some of the impasse throughout the map because I want to have uh, kind of some narrower points of entry and pathing for both players. Well, for both teams, I should say. And then also later on, I don't think I have footage of this, but I do paint some blue in there for water and I do end up actually changing the colors and I don't totally redesign the impasse here, but I do change it up quite a bit as I'm putting things in the map and thinking about flow and, and kind of getting some early feedback from people. Now, before I let you all go, I just wanted to chime in with one last thing and that's the importance of placing blockers in your map. And I don't mean like the, the gameplay asset. I mean buildings, hedgerows, and in Company of Heroes 3, rocks. So you can just plop down some of these assets. You don't, they don't have to be very precise. They don't have to look perfect. But um, I like to use these to give myself a good feel of the layout. And they help add kind of a, a three-dimensional piece to your map. And I think they also kind of bring you into the scale because it, it can be hard to judge things when it's just, you know, like a gray box texture and a bunch of painted lines on the map. And then the other thing to think about too is actually scaling the objects. So because I don't want to have these huge rocks that stick out because the desert in this area was actually very flat and just basically rocky sand and shrubs. Um, so I want these rocks to not really stand out, but be there just enough to, they're going to be just high enough to block sight and they're not going to be, they also want to be high enough so it doesn't look like you can just walk onto the rock. Um, but yeah, I'm going to talk about blockers in, an, in another video because they're actually much more complicated in Company of Heroes 3, at least the rock blockers. Buildings are pretty straightforward, but again, a bit more complicated because you can just blow them up and they no longer block pathing. Like I said, rocks, hedgerows, and buildings are great assets to plop down because you don't need to be super precise with them and they really help put you into that 3D environment early on. Well, that's it for this video, folks. Thank you for following along. I hope you learned something from this and me kind of showing you how I'm making my map helps you out. And as always, if you have any questions about world building, feel free to just say something in the comments. Um, alternatively, you can join the World Builders Discord with the link below. If you like what you see, don't be afraid to subscribe, leave a like, a comment, good or bad, whatever. It'd just be good to, it's good to know that people are, are watching the videos and hopefully taking away something from them and that that helps them make their own maps. Thanks everyone. Take care.